Hello, everyone, and welcome to the ARM assembly class here at Pentester Academy. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to this new exciting class that we have on ARM assembly. So what can we say about ARM? Well, ARM is actually a company that doesn't make processors. What they do is they design processors for other people. So other people such as Texas Instruments and other companies that make chips will actually build ARM processors and the company ARM just designs them. So there are are a number of families of these ARM processors. You'll hear people talk about that's an ARM7, ARM6, ARM8 processor. And there are also processors that are designed to be used like microcontrollers and those that are designed to be desktops. So we'll get into that a little bit more in some future videos. The ARM processors are what we call RISC processors. They are reduced instruction set CPUs. They are not complex instruction set CPUs or CISC processors, which is something you might be used to if you've done any assembly with Intel. A unique feature of the ARM architecture is that the endedness is configurable. Most of the time you're probably using a little endin processor with the Intel and AMD series. And if you went back in time a little bit and you did some work on a Unix workstation, it probably had a RISC processor, and it was likely big ended. So something fairly unique about ARM is that you can decide what endedness you want to have. Some other features of the ARM processors. They have lots of registers, at least 32. And it depends on the exact ARM processor that you get. They also have fixed width instructions. If you look at Intel, you might have one instruction that has a one byte opcode followed by a one byte parameter. The next might have a one byte opcode followed by a two byte parameter, etc. But that's not the case for ARM. All of the instructions are fixed width. It uses what we call a load and store architecture. It has eight privileged modes. In the Intel world, we have rings, and many operating systems don't use these to the fullest extent. Some of them, such as Windows, use two of the four rings. There's ring zero and ring three. And that's the only ones they use. There's something slightly different in the ARM processors and that's privilege modes. And we'll talk more about that in the future as well. We have something called conditional execution. And what that does is it allows you to reduce branching. So you don't have as many comparisons followed by a, you know, if this is true, jump ahead this far, etc. Now, it turns out that those operations are somewhat costly in this architecture. Another interesting feature is something called the barrel shifter. And the barrel shifter allows you to combine multiple mathematical operations in a single command, which is pretty cool. We'll talk about that as well. Other things you need to know about ARM. ARM can operate 
in two different modes. It has ARM mode, and in ARM mode you have 32-bit wide instructions. And in thumb mode, you have 16-bit wide instructions. So when operating in thumb mode, your programs can be much smaller. There is also something called thumb 2 mode, which has both 16 and 32-bit wide instructions. So you are somewhat able to switch back and forth. Now, if you're trying to do this conditional instruction thing that I mentioned earlier, it requires an extra command that's called the IT command. And again, of course, we'll, we'll go into that in more detail when we get to that point in this class. The ARM processors support four different data types. We have a byte, which is, of course, eight bits what they call a half word, which is 16 bits, a word that is 32 bits, and then the double word, which is 64 bits. So be careful because this nomenclature is slightly different from what you might find in some other places. Registers. We have 16 general purpose 32-bit registers and those are labeled R0 through R15. There may be additional registers depending on the exact processor that we have. Some of these general purpose registers actually have a normal purpose in life. We have R13, which is used as a stack pointer. That should be familiar to you if you've done any assembly on the Intel platform. We have something in R14, it's called a link register, and this is a function return address. So if you think to the Intel world, you would probably remember that in most cases, a return address from a function is stored on the stack, but in the ARM world, there's a register for that. And of course, that has some security implications. R15 is used as a program counter. It's kind of like the IP, the instruction pointer in the Intel world. However, it points two instructions ahead. You might say, well, why is that? The reason for that is historical. In the past, there was some pipelining that was done of commands for the ARM platform and it would read in two commands at a time and then act on that. And that's why the PC points two instructions ahead. So how far is that? Well, it depends on if you're in thumb mode or arm mode. There is a register called the Current Program Status Register, or CPSR. We'll get into the details of that later, but it has many of those flags that you might expect to find on any platform. Things like, was there an overflow? What was the comparison results? Things like that. We'll get into that later. Other interesting features of ARM. So ARM allows you to have different coprocessors. There are 16 of these defined by the ARM architecture, and they have varying functions. So a couple of examples. These functions include math. So if you want to have a math coprocessor, so for example, if I look at an ARM processor, I might find a version of Linux for it, and I might see something that says hard float as part of the version. That means that this is intended to work with an ARM processor that has a built-in math coprocessor. If I don't have the built-in math coprocessor on the ARM platform, I 
probably shouldn't be doing any kind of advanced math. We also have graphics coprocessors. These are very common. If I look at, let's say, the BeagleBone Black, for instance, which we'll use in this course, it is going to have a built-in graphics coprocessor. Now, each of these coprocessors has 16 registers of their own. And the only way to access these coprocessors is via two commands. You can write to them with MCR, and you can read from them with MRC. And this is how you control these coprocessors. So it's a somewhat unique approach. We will, of course, go through all of the different instructions that are available in the ARM platform. And we would start with load and store instructions, your standard push and pop, your stack operations, talk about how you can do math, talk about how you can define and call functions, how you can do standard branching, and then how you can avoid doing that branching using conditional instructions. We will also discuss things like self-modifying code, which is something you can easily do on the ARM platform. You know, if you've gone through some of our Intel assembly classes and or some of our reverse engineering courses for the Intel platform, you'll know that in many modern operating systems, self-modifying code is pretty hard to do. And that's a little bit different with ARM. So in the case of ARM, it might actually be possible. So that's pretty much it. That is an introduction to our ARM assembly class. As a reminder, this class is part of a whole family of classes and videos that we have here at Pentester Academy, your source for everything InfoSec. And I look forward to seeing you in this class or another class soon. See you then.